Hey guys, so I just watched Dr. Foster on Netflix and boy, does it have all the elements of how a malignant narcissist acts in divorce negotiations. I'm breaking down the show and I'm giving you tips on how to negotiate successfully in this video, so stay tuned. Hi, I'm Rebecca Zung. I've been recognized as one of the top 1% of attorneys in the country, and I'm also a narcissist negotiation expert. I've written a couple of best-selling books. And what I do is I teach you how to negotiate successfully with narcissists. So if that's what you want, and you are so ready to have step-by-step -step guidance on actually getting somewhere with this horrible, toxic personality, then make sure that you hit subscribe and you hit that notification bell. And that way you'll get notified when I upload brand new content. Okay. So if you haven't watched Dr. Foster yet, this is your warning that there will be spoilers here. So if you want to go watch it first and then come back, then you can definitely do that, but consider this your spoiler warning. Okay. So the show is really, really fascinating because it takes this woman who seems to have like this incredible life, Dr. Foster. Uh, she, she, it's set in England. She lives in this cute little town outside of London and she's got her, her medical practice. She's got a husband. She's got a 13 year old son. She's got a beautiful home and life seems to be perfect for her. Her husband comes back from being away on a trip, you know, some sort of a work trip apparently. He gets home late at night. He jumps on top of her. They seem to have this great physical relationship too. In the morning, they're getting ready for their days. And all of a sudden she sees something fall out of his pocket and it's a woman's lip balm. And he just br brushes it off and says, oh, it was the only kind they had. I needed something for my lips. And that's the only one that the store had. And she's like, okay, I guess, you know. So then the next thing that happens is she uses his scarf the next day to, there were that day to go to work and she gets to work and she goes in her office and she goes to hang up the scarf and there's a long blonde hair on the scarf and she starts to get suspicious about, hmm, what's that about, right? So she then goes into this obsessive like, I need to know, I need to find out. I think he might be cheating. And, and he's of course gaslighting her. Oh, you're crazy. And that's not me. And you're, you're really, you know, losing it and all this other stuff. Every time she tries to say something. Um, and, and by the way, one of the things that narcissists do is they engage in what I call the three deadly sins of marriage, which are the three A's, abuse, addiction, and adultery. And if you want to know more about the three deadly sins of marriage, definitely check out my video on that topic. But, you know, here he is like engaging in one of these three deadly sins, right? And also, by the way, Here's where you see in, in this movie where some of these flying monkeys are lining up with him and actually even helping him. One of her medical partners actually sends a text and warns him that she's like left work early and, and probably going to follow him. And so he like gets that warning and goes to visit his mother at the nursing home instead. And it's kind of crazy how all this starts happening to her, right? Um, and, and even these flying monkeys, people that she trusted, people that she even like, you know, confided in, she finds out are part of this whole thing. And so, you know, what happens with the flying monkeys is they actually start, um, you know, adding more trauma to you. And if you, you want to know more about that, check out my video on Operation Triangulation. I talk more all about that, but that's what happens. So anyway, she, he, she finds out that her husband is actually having an affair with this 22-year-old. And in the movie or in the show, they actually show that he, you know, she threw a 40th birthday party for him. So we know that this girl that he's having an affair with is roughly half his age, which is, you know, the guy is like such a typical narcissist in so many ways. I mean, here he is. He's got to have all of that out external supply. He's got the, the doctor wife, the perfect family. He wants to maintain that facade that it, he's got this big deal going. And by the way, we find out that the big deal that he's got going for his work is actually be, being funded by 
the father of this girl that he's having an affair with. And the father doesn't know that this guy's sleeping with his daughter. So she finds out, uh, Dr. Foster finds out because the girl comes to her office that she's actually pregnant with her husband's child. It ends up to be a girl. Um, but it's so crazy how um, she just becomes unglued with this whole thing. And that's what happens. Like they make you crazy and they make you unglued. And then what happens is they turn around and use that against you and say, hey, you're crazy. But they, they forget about the fact that they made you that way, right? Um, and so anyway, they end up having this massive showdown at the house at the end of the season, season one. He smashes her head against the window. There ends up being a restraining order against him. He leaves town. The next season opens up with, it, it's been two years. She's been living there with her son, all is well. He decides to move back to the town with his now young wife and their now two-year-old daughter. And it just drives Dr. Foster crazy because it doesn't seem like there's been any bad things with him. Like there he is, like living in this beautiful, big, massive house. And he's got this fantastic job. And she's like, where's this money coming from? And where's this, how is he getting all of this? So she actually goes to the house that where he's about to move into and starts looking around like, can't believe this, right? And he sees her there and, and starts goading her and taunting her again. And, you know, he's, he does all the, the things that narcissists do. He hoovers, he gaslights, um, you know, he, he has his flying monkeys there. Um, it, it's just on and on. Like, it's like very, very classically narcissistic. And by the way, no remorse. He blames her for the fact that he had to leave town. He blames her for the fact that there was an injunction against him. He, he, I mean, all of it is her fault. Like no, no remorse whatsoever, no guilt. And it just drives her crazy. So here's the thing that I want you to know. They end up like one-upping each other, you know, scorched earth, what we call it scorched earth litigation or scorched earth tactics, you know, where they're just constantly, you did something, you did something, I want to win, I want to win, I'm not going to let you win, I'm not going to let you win. And they get into this mud. And what happens is they really end up causing a lot of drama, trauma, and chaos, not just for themselves, but more importantly, for their son, who is stuck in the middle of these two crazy people who are just trying to do whatever they can to destroy each other. And my message to you with this is stay out of the mud. I mean, he goaded her and she took the bait and then she looked crazy. And this is what happens when you are in negotiations and especially when you lose control in negotiations. Don't fall for that. Don't do that. Don't get down into the mud. Instead, be strategic. You can create leverage. You can expose them using your leverage. And if you want to know more about that, check out my video on take down the narcissist using this magic bullet. I talk all, all more about that. So, but this is how you actually take down the narcissist. You will never, ever, ever be able to do it by being down in the mud with them. You will get nowhere. Okay, you will continue to cause drama, trauma, and chaos for yourself and for others, including if you have children, for your children. But you can do it strategically. You absolutely can. I've helped millions of people do it, and that's how you can do it too. And if you want to know how to get started, just grab my free Crush My Negotiation prep worksheet at winmynegotiation.com. It's an ebook. It's totally free and it's 15 pages and it's at winmynegotiation.com. Uh, you can also join my free private Facebook group, Narcissist Negotiators with Rebecca Zung. Um, it, that's on Facebook. And if you like the video, like it, share it, drop me a comment. Give me a comment that says expose them. If you are so ready to expose them, give me an expose them down in the comments and make sure you subscribe and hit that notification bell. I'm Rebecca Zong. I am so glad that you stopped by. Remember today is a great day to start negotiating your best life. And I will see you in the next video.